Have you been looking for a watercolor paint that can be used as a substitute for the fugitive color, Opera Pink? I have a color on my palette that works as a great substitute. The color I'm recommending is rated very good in terms of light fastness, and it is a vivid pink with a slight blue tone. What color is it? Well, keep on watching to find out. Welcome to my studio. My name is Chris. This channel is all about tools, tips, and tutorials for growing in watercolor. Before we get started talking about my alternative to Opera Pink, let me direct you to my free color chart that includes all the colors that I'm currently using here in my studio. This PDF download includes the names, pigment numbers, and manufacturers of all the colors that I'm currently using. If you want more information about the colors I will be mixing later in this video, you'll find all those details in this free chart. I'll leave a link in the description area below. Now, if you've been painting in watercolor for very long, you've probably heard about fugitive colors. These are paints made with pigments that are rated as not light fast. This means that when they're exposed to natural light or UV rays, they fade over time. Most professional artists stay away from fugitive colors to protect the integrity of their artwork and to ensure that it will last for years and decades to come. Opera pink is a popular color and is included in many watercolor sets. It is a highly desirable color, especially for floral artists who need a way to paint those beautiful pink blooms. However, the problem is it's fugitive. You can see by looking at the Daniel Smith color chart here, Opera Pink is made from PR-122 and a fluorescent color additive. It is this additive that makes the pigment fugitive, causing it to be rated a level four or lowest rating for light fastness. So as I began my search for a substitute for Opera Pink, I decided to start with this base pigment, PR-122. This pigment by itself, without the fluorescent additive, is considered light fast. A look through the Daniel Smith color catalog led me to quinacridone lilac, which is made with a single pigment, you guessed it, PR-122. Now be aware that the color chart that is published by Daniel Smith says quinacridone lilac looks like this. In my opinion, this is not an accurate color representation of quinacridone lilac. Let me show you what this color looks like. I have swatched it out here on 140 pound, 100% cotton cold press paper. As you can see here, when quinacridone lilac is used undiluted, it creates a rich magenta color that leans a little bit towards blue. However, when diluted with water, it's easy to achieve a beautiful pink color. Here is a side-by-side -side chart of the Daniel Smith colors that fall in the pink or rose or magenta color zone. Quinacridone lilac, as you can see, is right in the middle. It is a bit bluer than its close neighbor, quinacridone rose. And when diluted, it doesn't fade into a reddish color like some of the other colors on this chart. It's a beautiful color and it's just what I was looking for. Another bonus I have discovered is that Quinn Lilac mixes beautifully with other pigments to create unique colors. Here are some of my favorite mixes. When mixed with French Ultramarine, Quinacridone Lilac makes a beautiful clear purple color like you see here. When mixed with Permanent Yellow Deep, which is PY110, it created a really earthy, beautiful orange color. I decided to mix it with Thalo Green Blue Shade, which is PG7, and I got this beautiful gray color. It actually looks like Moon Glow, which is a really popular Daniel Smith color. I also mixed Quinacridone Lilac with Green Gold and achieved this really beautiful golden color. In my opinion, it looks a lot like Quinacridone Gold. Next, I mixed Quinacridone Lilac with Hansa Yellow Medium and achieved a little duller, uh, lighter orange color. This mixture actually with more yellow and more water could actually create a pretty convincing skin tone. Here I mixed quinacridone lilac with cobalt teal blue. I got another purple color, a little more muted this time. 
And finally, I mix quinacridone lilac with raw sienna, which is PBR7, and got this interesting coral color. So there you have it, just some of the colors that I mixed with quinacridone lilac. This is obviously just the beginning of the interesting colors that you could mix with this pigment. I encourage you to give it a try and see what you can come up with. Again, if you'd like to see all of the colors that I currently have on my watercolor palette, I encourage you to download my color wheel chart from my website. You can learn about all the colors that I've used in this video, as well as all the other colors I'm currently using in my studio. And as an extra bonus, I also have on my website a downloadable template for creating your own color wheel chart like this from the colors on your palette. I prefer to swatch my colors in this round format like you see here because it helps me identify color relationships and complements. And it also works wonderfully with my Stephen Quiller porcelain palette that I use here in my studio. There'll be links to all these downloads and products in the description area below. Thanks for watching and subscribing and leaving comments below. Have a great day and keep on growing in watercolor.